Hello guys, my name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of brutal Russian invasion to keep you updated on real-life situation in my country during these challenging times. And also I believe that together we will witness the victory of good and Ukraine. So if you support Ukraine, please subscribe to the channel. This is the easiest way to demonstrate your solidarity and to make more people know about what is life during war and how we are approaching our victory. And today I want to speak about one personality which whom I don't want to call a personality because for me personality has some positive traits. And we will speak about Ir Strelkov Hirkin, one of Kremlin orgs that got arrested by other Kremlin orgs because of uh, Kremlin conflicts. That is good for Ukraine, and I personally like observing how one monster is eating another monster, but I feel that many people uh, sympathize Hirkin not understanding that, of course, he criticizes Putin, but he criticizes Putin and show who that they are bad at killing Ukrainians. Russia is evil. The majority of people in Russia are evil. I'm sorry to inform you about that because all of us are looking for something positive around, but it sometimes may not be true. Just as there were no positive things in Hitler, there are no positive sy symptoms in anything that happens right now in Russia. So let me uh, remind a little bit about the history of this Igor Strelkov Hirkin. He was a Russian FSB top, like I don't know what was his military position, but it was definitely something upper. And he becomes famous during the annexation of Crimea in Ukraine, because he was one of the leaders of this illegal invasion, when Ukraine was advised not to react and not to escalate, thus committing one of the greatest mistakes in our modern Ukrainian history. After annexation of Crimea, Hirkin moved to Luhansk and Donetsk regions, to organize so-called separatist movements and also take these territories. He was super active during 2014, 2015 there. During that period, they actually shot MH17 and made a lot of other crimes. But since 2015, he, he returns back to Russia and starts vlogging, blogging and so on, where he actually criticizes Russian army for inability to capture all Ukraine, kill more Ukrainians, and so on and so forth. So Hirkin was dissatisfied with a special military operation of Russia, that it stuck in Donbass and Luhansk, but he was popular among Russian Nazi patriots. He was speaking about the revival of empire, he was also keen on collection of former Ruski lands, and he was respected in Russian society. That's why for a very long period of time, no one touched him. He had his FSB friends, he had his um, respect among the uh, um, Russian population because he is one of the authors of the annexation of Crimea, because he started war in uh, Donbass and Luhansk. So Putin permitted him to continue speaking. His vlogs became very popular after the start of full-scale Russian invasion and uh, they were watched even in Ukraine. Why? Because Hirkin was criticizing Russian army and demonstrating its mistakes. That is useful for Ukrainians and Ukrainian armed forces and many Russians shared him opin his opinion and many Russian military also shared his opinion. He was saying about strong sides of Ukrainian army, weak sides of Russian army, and he was constantly drawing conclusions that everything went wrong. Shoihu is wrong. Um, they are not enough like professional. He was speaking about corruption. He was speaking about like all the things that he did not like and with his uh, military eye he could recognize. But we remember the reasons of these vlogs is not to stop Russian war in Ukraine and take uh, illegal forces out of the independent and democratic European country. He was recording these vlogs to inspire Russian army, change the tactics and strategy and thus occupy more Ukrainian territories and kill more Ukrainian people. 
So we have to understand that the Hirkin is just the same evil as Prigozhin and just the same evil as Putin. This is a bunch of criminals that must be not just uh, under court in The Hague. I would like to see them hanging in The Hague. So, now he was arrested. And there are lots of photos where he looks like not very cool because uh, like um, he is, uh, he did not expect such things to happen to him. And uh, they want to send him to prison and we don't know. Maybe he will drink poison tea or he will jump out of the window. Um, anything can happen because Putin is a person that likes killing his opponents. So why did he order to arrest the Hirkin now after so many years of vlogging and um, criticizing Prihozhin? Prihozhin's coup uh, demonstrated that there are people who are not satisfied with Putin's reign and uh, they are among military, they are among political, oh my god, elite, which is not an elite in Moscow. And uh, Putin is now afraid that uh, someone can uh, organize another coup. So he does these cleanings. I had a separate video on uh, purges, as you've told me, purges in uh, Russian army when lots of generals disappeared or lost their positions. And you can check this video. But Hirkin also joins this uh, tendency of purges in Russian army. What does it give us? Well, first of all, for a year or for a month, Putin may clean his environment from dangerous people. But this does not change the reality, because seeing this arrest, seeing this dissatisfaction, more and more people will unite. You know, this is a tendency, like when someone is persecuted and others are dissatisfied, they unite, organize, and maybe one day we will see a more successful <laughs> movement than Prihozhin's was. Maybe Prihozhin will repeat it if he survives, maybe someone else will appear. But it, it does not mean that this coup will lead to the end of war in Ukraine. Why? Because the majority of Russian politicians, and I am sorry, this is the reality, the majority of Russian people are for war in Ukraine, are for killing of Ukrainians, are for the destruction of our uh, country, and they hate West. Um, Please subscribe if you want to know more about Ukraine and Russia. And I know that many watch without subscription and that is not difficult to subscribe. Please, this makes the channel more visible. Anyway, uh, it's interesting to observe all of these conflicts happening right away in Russia because they lead to chaos and chaos is good for Ukrainian counteroffensive. And when I compare our societies, it's really difficult like to compare Ukrainian active civil society with volunteers, patriots and all of that with Russian population that says, I am a political, I don't understand anything, I don't want any responsibilities and so on. Um, so uh, they don't have any control and chaos is one of the words that perfectly describes Russia. And that's why they need these dictators who are above the chaos saying, I rule. But sooner or later it will end. The problem is that in Russia, in a couple of uh, decades, they will choose another dictator and we will have more problems. That's why Ukraine has to join NATO and to be very, very, very militarized. Thank you so much for buying me coffees and becoming my patrons. Uh, join my Instagram, Twitter, threads and Discord community. I post different kind of uh, content there. Check our merch store and most importantly, speak about Ukraine. Remind about Ukraine because this war continues and we have to win it. Slava Ukraini!